All right, hey guys, welcome to Traditional Bowling Wilderness Podcast. This is Jason. Today we're going to talk about binoculars and why I think they're so important, as well as what size is going to probably work best for you, and do they need to be expensive? So that's what we want to cover today. I don't ever hunt without binoculars, okay? They're always on me. Um, I'm hog hunting right now, just got done doing a four-mile loop. We're getting ready to go move to a new spot for the afternoon and do another loop. When I'm deer hunting, I always have them on. They're always with me. And they're a very valuable tool. Having your binoculars allows you to look into stuff. And I'll show you some examples here, okay? But I can check brush piles. I can literally take and dive in and look at a brush pile and see if there's black hair or hog hair. You know, I can see if there's actually a hog bedded into that blowdown. Um, I can do that kind of stuff. If I see some movement, I see palms moving up there, I can put my binoculars up and I can see, is that a hog moving them? Um, I can see what's going on. If I see a string of black go through, I can check and see, is that a squirrel? Is that a crow? Is that actually a hog? I can do stuff with them. For deer hunting, deer hunting comes in super handy because once I'm up in a stand, especially how I go in in the dark in the mornings into a new place. When I get up in a stand, I can actually use my binoculars and I can look for scrapes, I can look for rubs, and I can check everything around me. Very valuable tool to have. Um, also, when I'm walking in and out of stand, when I'm deer hunting, I usually don't carry them on me. They're in my pack, but I can't tell you how many times I wish I did have them on me. I, the reason I don't is I don't want to climb with them because I don't want to hit sticks. My climbing sticks, I don't want to snag and scratch lenses. Um, so I don't carry them up and down a tree or when I'm walking in so they just stay in my backpack. I can't tell you how many times I wish I had them because I'm walking into a stand and I see something and I look and oh, there's a deer right there. Very valuable. A lot of states require you to have uh, shoot eight points or more or four points on one side. Right now here in Georgia, I already killed one small buck, so I have to only shoot... Um, it's got to be eight, four points on one side to be legal and a 15 inch or 15 inch spread inside. In order to determine that on an animal, it's nice to have binoculars. I can count one, two, three, four. That one's an inch. We're good. Okay. And I can know, then I can say that one, if he comes in, I can shoot at him. So they're very valuable on a lot of levels. When you're blood trailing animals, when you shoot an animal, animal comes by, you shoot him, he takes off running. You're like, I think that hit was good. You can use your binoculars and find that arrow and go, oh, there it is right there. Oh, look at all the, I can see the bubbles. Oh, that's perfect. Can I find any blood? Let's see. There's some, there's some, there's some, there we go. Okay, mark that tree right there. That's where I can't see any past any blood any farther. It's that easy. So it's a very, they're such powerful tools. All right, so as an example, we're at one power right now. See that brush pile over there? Okay, if I want to look into their hogs, they're notorious for bedded down in these thick blowdowns that are sitting there like that. They crawl right up in under those leaves. It keeps them nice and warm, but I can't tell if there's a hog in there. But if I zoom, we got this. Is We're at one power. This is what the naked eye sees right now. Okay, so if we go up, we're going up. Look at we're at three. Okay, here's six and a half. There's my binoculars. So I can see in there pretty good. And so I can see if there's anything in there. If we go to eight, there's eight power. Okay, so we can see. Now watch what happens when we get it. Look at, see, you notice that shaking already? Watch when we get to 10. Okay, I'm going to, see how I'm trying hard here. I'm really, two hands on the phone. I'm trying hard to hold that steady. But see how we're dancing around a little bit? Now watch when I try and move a little bit. See that? That's because of the fact that it's harder to hand hold them. If we go to 12 power, which is the max I can, look at look at as I try to, oh, image stabilizing is kicking in. There we go. That's the phone doing that. But, I mean, this is brutal hard to hold something like that steady. So having something, again, we go back to here's 8 right here. That's actually 8.2. See if we can get right there. Hang on. There's 8 right there. Okay, so eight is a very stable, easy to hand hold. We go down to six and a half power. Hang on, I went too far. Okay, six and a half power, still very easy to hand hold. But we can use these to see into those kind of brush piles. Here we are back at one. There's a big difference between this and, hang on, that right there. That's what binoculars do for you. They let you see into that kind of stuff. They let me look through here and say, oh, what was that speck of black? I just saw move through there. I can then do this. 
we're going right up to eight standard eights hold on i went too far right there eight so i can look in there now and i can see what's there if there's a buck standing there i can count the points on his head all the way back there now let's see how far we're looking we go back to one power i mean that's a big difference okay so it makes a there's there's a huge difference in that um and so handy to have now as far as how to set them up or what to do with them first let's talk about power wise because that's going to make a difference if you're using if you're out west hunting i can understand 10 power 12 power you're probably anything above 10 you're going on a tripod with anyway you can't ha hand hold them you notice every time i do this i'm running my hands tight together like this and i'm really keeping it stable okay that's very important these are only a six and a half power but it's still important to stabilize now with these though with a six and a half i can hand hold these one hand all day long and be very stable with these and, and be able to see everything so i could still be holding my bow like this and I could walk through and all I got to do is pick them up and look and I'm okay where if I go to anything above an eight power I have to stop set my bow down lean it in get two hands on it and then look to keep it stable because it's 10 power it's too shaky otherwise um so i'll show you an example of that here too i'll put it in i'm going to record a couple little clips here for you that'll go in at the end or into this part so um the uh having that power factor in my opinion for most of the thicker woods kind of stuff um anything from six power to eight power is going to be work really good i honestly think in reality a seven power but nobody makes them but a seven um a seven or an eight power i love these six and a halves uh there are a couple times i wish especially for looking into little spots for for hogs into some of these little brush piles i wish i had just a smidge more i find myself maybe having to take a couple of more steps to go nope that's not that's not here um you know when they're bedded down in these these brush piles i'll show you an example so i think an eight power which still gives you good low light capability an eight by 30 eight by 32 these are this is a six and a half by 32 these are vortex eight by 32s diamondbacks um and these are fantastic these are what i use for hog hunting uh, for the last two years they are an incredible binocular they're diamondback models they're cheap they're like 190 dollars. they're not expensive but they worked fantastic okay i bought these to replace them i love these kawa uh, these are kawas uh six and a halfs um honestly if i did it again would i buy six and a half or would i buy the eights i'd probably buy the eights you know, like I said, I love my Swarovski 7x30s. I don't even have them here with me. I have Swarovski 10x42s, had like an 8x42s. Um, honestly, I don't feel that the the big or the, the high-end lenses matter as much as they used to. Not for a lot of what we do. Now, if you're a Western hunter, that's a whole different ballgame. Um, even a big, big country Midwest hunter, like somebody that's in Kansas and Nebraska, things like that, I totally get it. Um, for the stuff we're doing in 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 the Middle East, or everything basically to the east of the Mississippi, I don't think that that quality matters quite as much. Um, the the low, That quality hasn't gained a lot of traction in the higher end ones in the last decade. Whereas the quality in these in the last 10 years has gained a, gained a tremendous amount of traction. So that gap is now much smaller than what it used to be uh, when your choices were, you know, uh, Tasco and Bushnell, um, you know, um, Nikon, Leopold, uh, Leupold, you know, that kind of stuff versus the high end things. Um, th there's been a lot of good improvements in the glass. So I don't think you need to spend that kind of money personally. Um, you know, $300, $200, $350, $400, I think they're going to do pretty well. Ten years ago, I'd have told you, that, you know, buy the cheapest thing you can and work your way up to, you know, something Swarovski like a Zeiss, that kind of thing. Honestly, um, when I said that too, I was also doing a lot of tree stand hunting where I just strictly stayed in a tree stand and never, you know, and they only came out when I got on my stand and I used them and then I put them back before I got down. Hunting here with what I'm doing now, I am very hard on binoculars. Look at the look at the condition of these now. I mean, look at look at how beat up they are in here, beat up in here, the scr scratched up lenses. Look at how dirty everything is inside of there. Uh, you can see in here they've been glued. I had to put glue in here to hold the eye cups up. They have been beat up so bad. 
um, they were fantastic and they still are. They still work like a champ. I, I love them. They are fantastic glasses for $200. So these, not a bad idea whatsoever. These are going to be a little um, more pricey, but not too much. $350. bucks. they are great, like I said. Um, I love the 6.5s. Uh, the 8s is probably what I would do more for, for deer. This is perfect for hogs, like I said. Diving into these little brush piles, sometimes you want just a little bit more verification on them. I run both of mine are the same way they are on just a piece of paracord that is on here tied and I have a taunt line hitch right here that is adjustable up and down same with these ones here this is a piece of paracord here also it is a taunt line there's tied off right here and then I have a slider on these okay these are actually one of those plastic sliders so you can do something like that this kind of gets annoying on the back of your neck uh, so with this one I just did a taunt line Okay, it holds solid. I can still adjust it and slide it up and down. I want it right where it is right now, but it's adjustable, but simple and easy. And it stays right here and I can make them tight. I can keep them loose. I can do whatever I want to, but it doesn't bother me. They're such a lightweight binocular. Uh, the bigger you go, the heavier they're going to be. The higher objective lenses you go, the heavier, the bigger and heavier they'll be, but they'll also let more light gathering in. These 8x32 vortex diamondbacks can see better than my eye can in darkness so at low light when i'm going i hear something moving and it's completely black my bow's hung up and i'm like what is that i can't tell what that is i can not only see that it's a deer i can count the points still and everything but yet i cannot see it with my own eyes my naked eyes cannot see it but with the binoculars i can i don't need anything to do anything more than that so for me an 8 by 32 perfect Okay, 7 by 32, 6 and a half by 32, perfect. I don't feel that you need to go to an 8 by 42. Uh, they are great, but they are much bigger. For that, I'm going to probably want some kind of a harness or some kind of something to carry them. With these ones, very easy to carry this way. So hopefully that gives you a little insight into why they're so important and what value they had. I know some people that don't ever wear them. Um, and that's fine. More power to you. This is one thing I will never, ever walk into the woods without. Plain and simple. I, I, if, I, if I left them at home, I would turn around and drive back and get them. If I went on a trip and didn't have them, I would run to some sporting goods store and buy a pair of these so that I had them on me. I will never not have binoculars. They're that important to me. So hope you enjoyed the video.